Welcome back to Alabama Tech. We're on the road again this week as we head down to Gainesville, Florida. After witnessing the nationally televised beatdown in Clemson last week, the athletic department has been barraged with allegations of abuse. Though university lawyers have assured the coaching staff that poor scheduling is not a crime, the AD has implored us to put on a more competitive showing in order to mend public perceptions. With that said, it's time to load up the trailer and ride down to the swamp. It's a rainy day here at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. I hope that pep talk can help us overcome the weather because our offense is struggling enough as it is. Now, can we go three for three on the coin toss this season? Nope. Let's just go ahead and take the knee right here. Let's be conservative and test their defense out. There we go. Decent gain of eight right there. And we're just gonna give it. And third and inches. I think this calls for the QB sneak. Let's go ahead and not forget to kill some clock, just in case this goes south. And I think that will just about do it for the first down. Oh, I don't know why he cut so hard to the inside, but. Oh. And a little spin move there. Pretty sure I should have given that. Third and six, I don't like our chances of running it. Oh, come on, John. And you gotta catch those. And Landon, you've gotta start kicking those straight, my man. We stop him for the six yard gain. And Emory Jones is a force to take down. We get the deflection. That looks like a false start to me. I'll take it. Gave him a little too much there, but good stop. And we're gonna stop him. They're gonna go for it. Can't say I blame them. Just a simple pass floated out to the sideline. All right, defense. My lord, we just cannot hold them to save our lives. And there's a flag on the play. Yeah, sure, whatever. I think they're daring us to return this one. I believe we should have called them on their dare. And we get nothing on the option. Shed off the block to get the tackle for loss there. And just like that, we're forced to air it out on third and long. And Chris Bogle deflecting the ball without even turning his head. Despite kicking it out of bounds, or almost out of bounds, they will return that one for a 30-something yard gain. We had no answer for the slant. All right, don't be a hero, Donald. You know, I'm not so certain if we could avoid another 90 point blowout if we just ran it up the gut every play. And a two yard loss there. Get wrecked. Looks like we're getting intercepted. Probably not the worst thing that could have happened. After all, our attempts to pin them deep on the punt would have just put them right there where they returned the interception to, so. We have an injury report. Looks like Paul Folks is going to be out for the rest of the game with a mild concussion. And somehow we managed to get a stop for loss. Ah, oh, yep, that one was on me. That stupid camera fake out. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. 
Can we throw some exotic blitz at them and get some production? Uh, no. No, not really. Emory Jones will just bully his way for 14 yards. There we go. And what's this flag for? No, there's no way. Ref, you don't need to do this. You saw what Clemson did to us last week. Do you really think Florida needs your help? There we go, got the deflection. And we stopped him for just a one yard gain. Come on, oh, oh, we were so close. Oh, that one hurt. I have to feel like if Paul Folks didn't get hurt there, we might have actually stopped them. And our left tackle just got abused. Despite everything that I think I know about running the option, the game proves me wrong yet again. Catch the ball! And a fair catch there. There we go, push him out of bounds. And barely saved that one from going to the house. On. There we go. Good stop. My disappointment is immeasurable. Good wrap up. Still cannot tackle. There we go. Got him for a loss down to another goal line stand again. And Emory Jones still bullying our poor hapless linebackers. Meanwhile, our offense can't hold a block, can't shed a tackle, can't catch a pass. Really not a whole lot that we can do. But we can get a pretty decent return there. <laughs> oh, Brian West still cannot hit the broad side of a barn to save his life. There you go, Brian. Oh, no. Uh, pain. All I feel is pain. Somehow, we managed to make that only a five-yard gain for them. There we go. Good stop. Fight. I don't know what else to say. I, I don't know how we can't defend just a simple drag or an out. Please tell me that was holding. A face mask on who? Nobody got tackled. I wish you could see my face right now. Thank you, Corey. Somebody can catch a ball and hold on to it. Hold the ball, Chris. Hold the ball. We can't afford any more turnovers. Oh, John. Still can't hold the ball. Boy. For the first time, Florida will be taking it out from the furthest possible. Just backyard football. And 
And we managed the deflection there. Come on! There you go. Finally got us a sack there. Well, we got a little bit of a stop there. Come on, take him down. There you go. We got the sack and we stopped him on fourth down. And that'll take us into halftime. It's not looking pretty for us so far. As I stated earlier, we can't keep them from breaking off 15, 20 yard runs. We can't catch a ball. When we do catch a ball, we're dropping it and fumbling it. The uh, turnovers have been our bane. We can't tackle. I uh, certainly hope we find something that we can build on going into this third quarter. Just kick it off down the middle. And 35 yard returns all day, every day. There you go, got us another sack. Come on, get off the block. Got him just short. Come on guys, let's hold him here. Ugh, just got enough. And Emory Jones is still untouchable. We have zero outside presence. Take him down. Come on, guys. We gotta hold him here. Or not. penalty. You can't just close line a guy like that. There you go, Chris. Oh, couldn't get the first down. Our run game is just terrible. There we go. That one won't be returned. Scramble drill every time. what will it be this time? A face mask that probably didn't even happen. And another offsides. I swear, Takeo Spikes is going to have y'all running gassers this week. I have never seen more undisciplined football play. We had the time to throw it, couldn't get the completion. Travis Anderson, the backup quarterback on the reception, good job. No reception there, Todd Odom couldn't bring it down. Uh, did he look like he got tackled? There you go, John, come on, go forward, go forward. Atta boy! Man, was he slow, though. Atta boy, Brian! Just went up there and snagged that ball. I knew you could do it. And Chad Jackson, where have you been? Why are you catching receptions? Come on, Chris. Get a little exotic on this one. And that one was blown up from the get-go. Come on, let's not waste the opportunity we've got here. Oh, no. We gotta go for it, don't we? I mean, right? No, John! That was in your hands! Get him down, bring him down. Oh, we 
really should have had that one. Can you please stop him here? God, this is giving me so much life. Oh, and that'll go nowhere. Attaboy, Brian. Hang on to the ball. And that'll give us a first down as we go into the fourth quarter. We're playing like a team possessed. And, oh, come on. That, that's a pass interference if I've ever seen one. boy John that's how you make up for that drop earlier hmm airmailed that one to the wrong zip code Atta boy Todd way to take a hit too I'm actually not feeling this one so I'm just gonna call the timeout let's think about this one for a second we just need one yard oh no Henry Stevens just didn't quite get it. Well, we have to go for it. There you go. We got the first down. Come on. Uh, nothing there. Still just cannot run the screen to save our lives. Oh, no. Nah. All I can do is grunt. Uh, that seemed like pass interference. Oh, he was wide open, Brian. After all that, we come away with nothing. And we got the sack. Even though this is a blowout, I'm still so much more prouder of this team in the second half coming out and showing some fight. There we go. Stopped him for just a one-yard gain. Oh, and when they needed a big play, they got a big play. Get 11. I think they're just tiring our guys out. And the QB keeper. Well, we got one more shot to try to at least get a touchdown. And I guess Donald really wants to take that one out. That was not me. boy Todd way to go up and snag that one putting his body on the line that one deserves a smack on the rear end oh and Justin Cox comes down with it I tell you the big man can fly oh come on John that was an easy one. Oh, oh man that was that was almost bad. Oh no, Justin! And we have another injury. Oh, this game is just brutal. And they were not biting on the fake handoff. I don't know why I went play action there. No, we're gonna go ahead and sub in. Please, somebody take Emory Jones down. No answers for a tired defense. Well, hey, if nothing else, that still gives us one more chance to get a touchdown. And unfortunately, one of our starting wide receivers is hurt, so that's going to make it all the more difficult. There you go, Todd. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, we're going to take the sack. Oh, the routes just didn't open up fast enough. That boy, Justin. That's going to make that third and manageable. That uh, boy. That go route just opened right up. We got to go into hurry up mode. Four verts it is. Get wrecked. No. And that is going to do it. Just when we were starting to get some momentum. Fortunately, Florida is going to put us out of our misery. Yes, yes, gator chomps all around. But despite all of that, I actually believe we found some things that we could build positively towards. We couldn't at least get seven points, but we actually started to find a little bit of a groove there going toward the end. And if nothing else, as I said, we found something that we can build on. Unfortunately, we did incur some injuries, but hopefully those are relatively minor and we should be able to recoup next week and come out strong. Let's look at our goal progress. We managed to accumulate three plus sacks, held the opponent under 300 passing yards, not really an accomplishment considering they didn't have to throw it. We also managed 10 plus first downs, so that's going to help us a good bit down the road. And we completed four plus third down conversions. As the coaching staff wraps up its recruiting efforts, our recruiting board has seen some significant changes. Firstly, after further review, the quarterback recruiting battle has led to a clear leader, Sean Wilson. We'll keep Andy Waddell on the board as a contingency, but we'll be backing off on his recruitment for now. Our defensive tackle GM, Scott Burns, still has us on the top of his list. We're up to second place for Ryan Russell, but Tulane has made a significant leap in his recruitment. We'll continue pursuing him, but we've added the two-star Mike Warren as a contingency. We seem to have pulled ahead for cornerback Jesse Chapman, so we'll reallocate those recruiting resources elsewhere. Juco linebacker Aaron Cooper has made the biggest leap on our board after a strong scouting report. We lead by a wide margin for Philip Pratt, so we'll be shifting those recruiting resources as well. We've identified another gym in Adam Butler, and it's a tight race between us, South Florida, and Florida Atlantic. Fortunately, we've secured a visit from him. Tyrone Justice and Kenny Dukes, we've also scheduled visits for. We're lagging behind Kent State quite a bit for Tyrone, so should he lock us out, we have Kyle Nelson waiting in the wings. Rob Pino, our backup center prospect, still has us second on his list, but hopefully we can secure a visit from him and gain some ground on Buffalo. Luke Daniels is the next lineman up for a scholarship should we lose out on either Adam Butler or Rob Pino. We have a comfortable lead for him. We are neck and neck with UTSA for wide receiver Ross Thomas. We will continue to push hard for him. Zach Williams we lead significantly for, as well as Daniel Harvey. Should we have any scholarships remaining toward the end of the recruiting cycle, defensive end William Davis will be next in line for one. Lastly, we've added receivers Kevin Peters and Jonathan Bishop to the board as a contingency in case we lose out for Ross Thomas and Corey Long. And we've added center Walter McGrew in case we still need a center. Despite the blowout loss, we surprisingly showed signs of life coming into the second half. If we can maintain that level of competitiveness throughout the rest of the season, I think we can pull out some wins against our fellow FCS league mates. If you've made it this far, then you are the real MVP. And if you got any entertainment out of this episode, then please pancake the subscribe button and drive the notification bell into the ground so that future uploads can walk right into your end zone. Well, that's all the puns and time that I've got for today. So until next time, I've been Joseph, the Crutenfinger of Doom. We'll see you soon.